Welcome back, everyone, again. Um, all right, let us <clears throat> begin as we look at Rome now um, with a short word of prayer. Most of Father in heaven, O oh Lord, um, Lord, we give thanks for for the light in which you, you have sent, leading us down in the stream of time, O oh Lord. Please help us to see, see ourselves now so that, so that our next steps m might be right ones, O oh Lord. Please help us now. Now as we search your word to, to see more light from your throne on high and lead us, O oh Lord, and, and we ask all these things. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so went through Babylon, Medo Persia, and Grecia. Now we come down to pagan Rome. And we know that Rome transferred from pagan Rome onto papal Rome, after that into the United States. And um, this Rome, Rome here is the kingdom that, that rules from this point onward. It's the spirit of Rome is the one that continues on from here onward because the United States shall speak as a dragon. And the 1843 chart tells us clearly here that this dragon here is pagan Rome. So when the U.S. makes, um, follows after Rome, it will speak just as Rome. It will put forth the same laws as Rome, and the laws of Rome are backed by the laws of Beda, Med, the Medes and the Persians. The Medes and the Persians made laws to kill, so therefore when it speaks like a dragon, it's going to make laws to kill. And this is clearly shown in Revelation 13, verse 15. So now we're just looking at Grisha with the, with the rough goat and the, and the, <coughs> and the, first, and, and the one horn, and that one horn broke into four. So, and these four to north, south, east, and west. And, but out of one of those horns come up Rome. So, we'll read Daniel 8, verse 8 and 9. It says, Therefore, the he goat waxed very great. And when he was strong, the great horn was broken. <clears throat> and for it came up four notable horns toward the four winds of heaven. And out of one of them, out of one of those four horns um, came forth a little horn, which waxed exceeding great toward the south, to the east, and towards the pleasant land. And this horn is the horn of Macedon. If you see on the chart here, you have these five horns, and then this fifth horn is this Macedonian horn, and this is where, this is how Rome comes up, is through, through the, that, that horn, the Macedon horn. There's the yeah, the, yes, that, that nation. So we can go to S twenty three D, the sanctuary and the, the sanctuary and the twenty three hundred days. <coughs> Excuse me, page thirteen, paragraph one, it says, this power was to come forth from one of the four kingdoms of Alexander's empire. Let us remember that nations are not brought into prophecy till somehow connect with the people of God. Rome had been in existence many years before it was noticed in prophecy. And Rome had made Macedon, one of the, one of the um, four horns of the Grecian goat, a part of itself, B.C. 168, about 10 years before its first connection with the people of God. And it says, see 1 Maccabees chapter 8. And I believe it has some verses. Um, no, we don't have any verses from there. Um, some of the pioneers quote it as we go along, I believe. See first Maccabees chapter eight, so that Rome could could uh, amen be be said be said to be out of one of them as the ten horns as the ten horns of the fourth beast in the seventh chapter could be said, could be said to come out of that beast when, when they were um, ten kingdoms set up by the conquerors of Rome. All right, PR US 
Paragraph 2. Can someone read this, please? The Aetolians. The Aetolians fell before the Roman arms, and then the Galatians, and now the way was, was open for Rome to continue her ambitious designs against um, Perseus, king of Macedon. At the battle of, of Pydna, his army was overthrown and his power broken. This was in B.C. 168. Macedonia was then divided into four districts, each of which was to be under a republican government. Half of the, half of the tribute formerly paid to the king was henceforward to be paid to the Romans, who, was, who also pro, uh, appropriated to themselves the produce of, of all the gold and silver mines of the kingdom. The inhabitants were forbidden to, to fell timber for, for shipbuilding and all intermarriages and sales of land between the people of the several districts were forbidden. With these marks of real slavery, they were left for, for the present nominally free and Macedonia was not yet reduced to the form of a Roman province. Mm -hmm. All right, so is this battle, is the battle of Pinna that fulfills this verse in Daniel, Daniel 8, Daniel 8, 8, out of one of them. All right. Battle of Pinna 168 BC is now when the Romans <clears throat> overthrew Macedon. All right. Continue on. GEP 243, paragraph. Three. Um, can someone read that as well, please? The circumstance. The circumstance which made the Roman populace so bold as to draw a circle around Antiochus Epiphanes and bid him answer before he stepped out of it, and which made Epiphanes so submissive as to comply with the, such a narrow condition, was the news that arrived just before of the great victory gained by the Romans over Perseus, king of Macedonia. Okay, so keep, keep this man's name in mind. Um, Antiochus Epiphanes was in, this, was in this battle, the Battle of Pydna. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. This victory, which destroyed the kingdom of Macedonia and added that country finally to the Roman Empire, was gained in the Battle of Pydna, June 22nd. 168 BC. Thus perished the empire of Alexander the Great, which had subdued and Hellenized the East 144 years after his death. Amen. All the Hellenistic states had thus been completely subjected to the protectorate of Rome, and the whole empire of Alexander the Great had fallen to the Roman Commonwealth, just as if the city had inherited from his heirs. Amen. So, this, this, this last war here is what brought Greece fully, fully down to, to, to where Greece is not holding any more power. And, and then, um, and, um, Antiochus. Yes, him, when he fell to Rome, and this is showing the, the fall, the fall, the fall of that whole the whole, the whole um, kingdom of Greece. Greece no longer held, held sway over um, the earth at all now. All right, continue on GEP 244, paragraph 1. It says, the moment was at least well chosen for such homes. Um, amen. Dates. Dates from the... Um, Battle of Pydna. Amen. The full establishment of the Empire of Rome. So 168 BC, this, this battle is showing the full establishment of, of, of Rome. It says, it was in fact the last um, battle. Amen. In which the civilized state, state confronted Rome in the field on a footing of um, equality. E amen with her as a great power. So after this, Rome, Rome fought men who were much, um, much, w w 
much Rika. yeah amen of her from that point forward um all <clears throat> all subsequent. subsequent struggles were were Rebellion. amen or or wars wars with um people peoples beyond the pale of the Romano Greco Greek civilization. civilization the barbarians as they were as called. they were called so now from this point onward now this brings in the the history of the trumpets because that is all, all they fought with after the Huns, the, the Goths, and so forth. So, after this point, there was n no more of, of, of these states fighting. Now, 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 it's these small hordes of men fighting against Rome constantly. So now you have to go to the, 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 the first four trumpets to go see, see what happened from that point onward. All right, um... Can someone finish this paragraph, please? The whole civilized world. The whole civilized world thenceforth recognized in the in the Roman state, in Roman yeah. Senate, the supreme tribunal, whose commissioners decided in a last resort between kings and nations, and and to acquire its language and manners, foreign princes, princes and use of quality resided in Rome. <coughs> Amen. Um. Can you take the next one? That's for Macedonia. As for Macedonia, by the Roman Senate, it was decreed in particular that the Macedonians and Illyrian, Illyrians, Illyrians should be declared free in order that all nations might know that the end of, of the Roman arms was not, the, was not to subject free people, but to deliver such as were enslaved, hmm. so that the one under the protection of, of the Roman name might always retain their liberty and the other, who were under the rule of kings, might be treated with more lenity and justice by them through hmm. consideration from the Romans for, or, the Romans or the Romans. Or that whenever war should arise between those kings and the Roman people, the nations might know that the issue of those wars would be, would be victory for the Romans and liberty for them. Right. So wow. this is the... This is the, the What's the word? This is the rule, rule of Rome from this point onward. They, they go forward to go and fight, fight in wars, but and when they win, they say that the men in which, which just now lost are now freed. But it's really not freedom. It is really, it is really an enslavement upon, upon them much, much more. By peace, you shall destroy me. Amen. Daniel 8, uh, 24. By, by peace shall she destroy many. <coughs> All right. Um, next paragraph, GEP 244.3. All right. Another thought in here, too, is um, you see that Greece enslaved people in their mind. That's what we just learned. Mm -hmm. So oh, yes. Ro Rome comes to free people. People's yeah. mind, so we have to expect that in the end of the world. When, uh, when so a certain class of people is enslaved mm -hmm. in the mind, then then you would find they Rome rising up and saying, "I come to make you free." Amen. I was a serpent with Eve. Mm -hmm. Yep. Amen. The and dragon's God's word bounds your mind. Yep. Amen. So Rome always comes with this false freedom, and they, these people were already free because they were governing their own affairs. Amen. By themselves. And now Rome comes and tells them, do it in this way. But, all right. All right, continue on. GEP 244.3. Can I read it for this as well, please? The reader begins to discover in the events related one of the principal characteristics of the Romans which will soon determine the faith of all the states of Greece and produce an almost general change in the universe. I mean, a spirit of sovereignty and dominion. This characteristic does not display itself at first in its full extent. It, is, it reveals itself only by degrees. 
and it is only by insensible progressions, which at the time at the same time are rapid enough that it's carried that it is carried at last to its greatest height. Amen. So Rome always works this way. It, it always seems nice and peaceful and, and, and nice at the start, mm -hmm. but it's working slowly and slowly onto a dictatorship, to tyranny, to putting you into bondage and to the work to to the worst bondage that you have ever been put into before. All right. It says, this horn must symbolize Rome. As in the parallel visions of Daniel 2 and 7, Rome, Rome came out of one of the horns of the goat as it conquered Macedonia, B.C. 168. And in 161, became connected with the people of God by its league with the Jews. And he sent, um, he gives all the <coughs> references for this. Thus, becoming a subject of prophecy and, 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 appearing. appearing. Amen. T -t 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 -t. To the prophet to come out of the Macedonian horn. It, it, um, extended. It extended its conquest toward the east, south, and pleasant land, Palestine. Making, um, provinces. Amen. Of the following countries. Syria in BC 65. So you have the east. It was the east south, correct? So east, pleasant land. Yes. Okay. I'm going to put PL for pleasant land. So we have, it says in Syria, BC 65. That's the east. The South, Egypt, mm -hmm. in BC 30. And the Pleasant Land, which is Palestine. BC 63. BC 63. That's how it took over the, the whole earth. Said it stood up against the prince of princes, nailing Christ to the cross. So the prince of princes is very easy to see. It, it is Christ because this, this is what I'm going to touch in a, in a few. It says, um, <clears throat> it says, by Rome, the daily was taken away and the transgression of desolation set up. That is, there was a change in the religion of the empire. Paganism, the daily desolation, was taken away and the papacy, the transgression of desolation, these two religions. It's a change of this religion, or the um, abomination, amen, that, that make of desolate was set up, Daniel 12, 11. And the host was given to him, the hordes, the, hordes, the hordes of the barbarians that overran the empire, but were converted to the papal faith. And this, speaking about these, these ten kingdoms here, when we look at um, 490 AD, as we, as, um, when we continue on. Um... Jump down to the last quote under this heading, DAR 53.4. says, the little horn comes forth from one of the horns of the goat. All right, now jump down to the bowl. So just showing that this little horn <coughs> is pagan Rome. But seven years before this, that is in B.C. 168, Rome, Rome had conquered Macedonia and made, made that country a part of its empire. Rome is therefore introduced into prophecy just as... See that in the United States. Go ahead. Um, Did we read this already? When America came up, they okay. enslaved blacks. Just as from, from the conquered Macedonian After horn the of the goat, was freed, it is they made going forth to new conquests in other directions. It therefore appeared to the prophet, to the prophet or, or maybe... Um, spoke. Amen. Of... of of in this prophecy coming forth from one of the horns of the goat. So it's going to Antioch's Epiphanies now, 164. Looking at the Prince of Princes. Because um, the Battle of Pydna, um, the Romans put him into a circle and says that he must answer before he leaves that circle. And, and he surrendered to, um, to the Romans there because of the news that he got because of the rumor that the Romans defeated them um, in, in, that, in that battle. 
So I'm going to establish who the Prince of Princes is, as it already was um, established in the, one of the quotes. But very easy text and quotes. And we'll see why that men want to apply the Prince of Princes to something else later on. Daniel 8, verse 25 <clears throat> says, And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. He shall magnify himself in his heart, and by, priest, and by peace shall destroy many. He shall also stand up against the prince of princes, but he shall be broken without him. Continue on. Genesis 32, verse 28, 28 says, And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel, for as a prince. So Israel is a prince. That's what Israel means. And, and the God of Israel is Christ. So Christ is higher than this prince. He's this prince of princes. Um, Hosea 12, verse 3. says he took his um, brother, brother by, by the heel in the womb, and by his strength he had power with God. Yea, he had power over the angel and, and prevailed. He wept and made supplication unto him. He found him in Bethel, and there he spake with us. Even the Lord God of hosts, the Lord is his memorial. So this angel that he wrestled with, we know, is Christ. Clear. Isaiah 9, verse 6 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. So clearly showing us that Christ is this prince. And Genesis 23, verse 6 and this is um, this is the prayer of of um, of of Abraham, and and he here calls Christ this mighty prince. So he um, so clearly shown here that Christ is this prince of princes that it will not be mistaken. Um, who? Who, um, who the Prince of Princes is and who shall stand up against the Prince of Princes. And Daniel 9.25, as we read, says Messiah the Prince. Acts 3.15 says, calls Christ the Prince of Life. And Revelation 1 verse 5 says, and the Prince of the Kings of the Earth. All right. So it's very easy and plain to see, see these things. All right. So now we'll read DR 151, paragraph 1. Um, all right, can someone read this, please? <coughs> A third power is here introduced into the prophecy. In the explanation which the angel gave to Daniel of these symbols, this one is not described in language so definite as that concerning Middle Persia and Grecian. Hence, a flood of wild conjecture is at once let loose. Had not the angel, in language which cannot be misunderstood, stated that Middle Persia and Grecia were denoted by the ram and the heagle, it is impossible to tell what application then would have given us, would have given us of these symbols. Hmm. Probably they would have applied them to anything and everything but the right objects. Leave men a moment with their own judgment in the interpretation of prophecy, and we immediately have the most sublime exhibitions of human fancy. Man. This is why people. Um, stumble over the Holy Spirit because things are not written explicitly as as openly and plain as as Christ. Uh, yeah as Christ is seen or as saying that okay the ram the ram the ram is the Medes and the Persians the 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 the, the, the he goat is Greece because because it's not written in that way this is now this is what he's speaking of here Uriah Smith that you're gonna have all these separate thoughts and these rules and so this is why people thought that's why people came came to this um. Um, that, that, in um, that, Amen. Yeah, stood up against against the Prince of Princes, yes. and they took the Prince of Princes and applied it to something else, to to suits suits with their own human fancy, as he says. Isn't that a Roman made prophecy? Yes, it is. Interpretation to throw yes. people off the trail. Yep, exactly is, and this is I think you're right. Smith brings says that very same. All right. Go down to the next paragraph. It says there are two l l leading um, applications. A amen. Of the symbol. Amen. Now, now under um, consideration. consideration, 
which are all that need to be noticed. Amen. In these brief thoughts, the first horn, no, the, excuse me, the first is that the little horn here, um, here introduced, Deus, yeah, denotes the Syrian king, Antiochus Epiphanes. The second, that it denotes the Roman power. So these, these are those two leading thoughts. Mm -hmm. Next paragraph. Um, someone read that one, please. Does it mean Antiochus? If so, this king must fulfill the specifications of the prophecy. If he does not fulfill them, the application cannot be made to him. The little horn came out of one of, of, the, four, of, of the four horns of the goat. It was then a separate power existing independently of and distinct from any of the horns of the goat was antiochus such a power he could not be because he was he was a syrian king mm -hmm. and syria was one of the horns and the little horn comes up that is independent of one of the horns so it can't be this little horn coming up which is a horn that was already there a syrian horn coming up from syria bringing in, bringing in a, a new kingdom it's not it has already been on the scene so what Uriah Smith here is doing is using rule, rule 13 of Miller's Rule. Because um, he says, um, it says, it must fulfill the, um, s s um, specifications, yes, of the prophecy. It has to fulfill it. And Miller says, but if one word lacks a fulfillment, then you must look for another event. So he's using this rule and showing that it cannot be this Syrian king. Amen. All right. DAR 151.4. Um, let's read this, please. Who was Antiochus? From the, time that, from the time that Seleucus made himself king over the Syrian portion of, of Alexander's empire, thus constituting the Syrian horn of the goat, until that con country was conquered by the, the Romans, 20, 26 kings ruled in succession over that territory. The eighth of these, in order, was Antiochus Epiphanes. Antiochus then was simply one of the, the 26 kings who constituted the Syrian horn of the goat. He was, for the time being, that horn. Hence, he, he could not be at the same time a separate and independent power or another and remarkable horn as the little horn was. Amen. So, so as as we just said, he 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 was of Syria, and Syria was was one one of those four horns. So he cannot be another horn that comes up because he is already part of one of the horns that is already established. Jump down. Jump down to DAR D A R one fifty two point two. Um may I have read it for this as well, please. Antiochus the Great, the father of Epiphanes, being terribly defeated in a war with the Romans, was enabled to procure peace only by the payment of a prodigious prodigious sum of money <coughs> and the surrender of a portion of his territory. And as a pledge that he would fully adhere to the terms of the treaty, he was obliged to give hostages, among whom was this very Epiphanes, his son who was carried to Rome. The Romans ever maintained this ascendancy, Amen. ever after. So, he himself was in the power of Rome. He himself fell into the power of Rome as a, as a um, hostage. So, he could not be be that little horn that comes up because he was brought brought in bondage to a, a power stronger than him okay DAR 152.3 says this little horn waxed exceeding great but this Antiochus did not wax exceeding great on the contrary he did not enlarge his his um dominion except ex, except except by some t um t Temporary. temporary conquest in Egypt, which he immediately relinquished when the Romans took 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 the part of um, Ptolemy and and um, him. Amen, to to 
to desist from his <coughs> designs in that quarter. The range of his disappointed um, ambition he vented upon the un unoffending Jews. All right, jump down. The bold. Can someone read, read, read that bold portion? Wait. Yes. Yes, please. Now the little horn, which wax exceeding great, must surpass them both. How absurd, then, to apply this to Antiochus, who was obliged to abandon Egypt at the, direct, at the dictation of the, of the Romans, to whom he paid enormous sums of money as tribute. Amen. Because, um, because Daniel 8 tells us that the, 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 this two-horned beast was great, and then, and, then, and then Greece waxed great, then Rome waxed exceeding great. Antiochus Epiphany would have to wax more great than, 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 than Greece if he's that little horn. And the Medes and the Persians was a universal kingdom. Um, Greece was a universal kingdom. So therefore, for him to wax even more, more than the Medes and the Persians and Greece, he would have to have a universal kingdom that is larger than, than, than them as well. And this is what Uriah Smith is saying, that that had not happened. So it can't, he cannot... Be, be that little horn that wax exceeding great. He's using God's word and is just plainly showing why this is, this is wrong. He's just reasoning from cause to effect. All right. Now, third to last paragraph <clears throat> in this section here. Someone re can someone read this paragraph? 153.1. Little Horn was to stand up against the Prince of Princes. The Prince of Princes here mean beyond controversy Jesus Christ. But Antiochus died 164 years before our Lord was born. The prophecy cannot, therefore, apply to him. For he does not fulfill the specifications in one single particular. The question may then be asked how anyone has ever come to apply it to him. We answer. Romanists take, the view, take that view to avoid the application of the prophecies to themselves, and many Protestants follow them in order to oppose the doctrine that the second advent of Christ is now at hand. Amen. So they do it to hide and to run from the fact that they are the ones that have killed Christ and are continually killing Christ by rejecting the messages. Also, I didn't add this in here. Um, he also went to... Jerusalem. He was also he also went to Jerusalem and defiled the temple, and this is what they used to say that he went up against the Prince of Princes because they, they're applying the Prince of Princes to the sanctuary. But one of the pioneers said, the Scriptures has never called um called it the Prince or or anything of that sort, so it cannot be applied to the to the literal temple or sanctuary in in Jerusalem. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. Um, now we're going to read 153.3 and we'll end, end there with this part um, the field of vision here is substantially the same as that um, c c c covered by Nebuchadnezzar's amen, image of chapter 2 and Daniel's vision of chapter 7 and in both, both of those um, prophetic, prophetic amen, we have found that the power which, 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 Greece. amen, Grisha as the fourth great power was Rome. The only natural interference would be that the little horn, the power which is in this vision succeeds Grisha as an exceeding great power is also Rome. And we also have the rule that it comes, it comes, it comes into prophecy when it um, comes in contact God's with God's people. people. So now this leads us to 158 BC, because it's now when um, Rome comes in contact with God's people. So looking at these notes, um, Daniel 11 verse 23 says, And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. He shall come up and shall become strong with the small people. It's to speak about Rome, that the um, the Jews shall make a league 
with the Romans. One second, let me look at this verse quickly. Okay. All right, cool. All right, so now we're going to look at the chart of 158 BC. It tells us we can, um, to find this history, you go to 1 Maccabees, which is in the Apocrypha. 1 Maccabees chapter 9, verses 70 and 71, and jo Josephus' um, book as well. Um, and Antiquities. Antiquities of the Jews. Yeah, um, I believe, I think that's book, book 13, chapter 2. All right, so we're going to look at 1 Maccabees chapter 8. What is it? Why does I have this here? Chapter 8, verse 19 to 29. We're going to look at for the, um, for the, the contract in which um, the Jews made, made with the Romans. Can someone read this, please? Let me look at something shortly. They went therefore to Rome, which was a very great journey, and came into the Senate, where they spake and said, Judas Maccabeus with his brethren and the people of the Jews have sent us unto you to make a confederacy and peace with you, that we might be registered your confederates and friends. So that matter pleased the Romans well. And this is the copy of the epistle which the Senate wrote back again in tables of brass and sent to Jerusalem that there they might have they might have by them a memorial of peace and confederacy good success be to the romans and to the people of the jews by sea and by land forever the sword also of the enemy be far from them if there come first any war upon the romans or any of the conf any of their confederates throughout all their dominion the people of the jews shall help them as the time shall be appointed with all their heart. Neither shall they give anything unto them that make war upon them, or aid them with vic victuals, weapons, money, or ships, as it hath seemed good to the Romans. But they shall keep their covenants without taking anything therefore. In the same manner also, if war come first upon the nation of the Jews, the Romans shall help them with all their heart, according as the time shall be appointed. Neither shall victuals be given to them to take part against them, or weapons, or money, or ships, as it seem good to the Romans. But they shall keep their covenants, and that without deceit. According to these articles, did the Romans make a covenant with the people, of the Jews. Amen. So they came a covenant relationship <clears throat> with the Romans. <clears throat> and this is what sealed their fate at the end. Covenant coming into a covenant relationship with the Romans again, because they asked, it says we have no king but Caesar. Caesar. Go ahead, Swanda. When you now uh, A.T. Jones in his paper, you know, he talks about the book of Daniel, Daniel eight and that well the whole book of Daniel speaking of the United States. Mm -hmm. Yes. This league says when war is made on the Romans, the Jews should join. That's what America did in 1989. Wait, this uh -huh. land, the glorious land, the mm -hmm. Jews, they joined the Romans and they gave them ships oh, and yes, money yes, 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 yes. and Amen. everything. And they, they, <clears throat> it's the same league. It's and, the same league. And then the United States went, went and made the same league with all the nations that after 9-11. Anytime this land is attacked, yeah. you have to join in too. Yeah. They, did, they continue the same evil. Amen. So, and as we said previously, all these things are written for our day. So these literal Jews back then made a league with the Romans. Mm -hmm. So what shall the spiritual Jews do? The very same thing. The, just as soon was saying, the land, th this land, um, th this land which is, which has been shown with this land previously, the, the glorious land, the pleasant land, Palestine, made, made a pact with Rome. So yeah. you already know that the United States... It's, it's chariots, horsemen, and many ships. Many ships. It's, it's Amen. Amen. Yeah. It, it joins, it leagues up mm -hmm. for, 
for, for help in, their, in, in, this, in this struggle. So Satan's going to put the United States into a deep struggle. And, and in her eyes, the only way to come out of this struggle is to join with Rome. But that's, that's false reasoning. All right. So continue on. All right, DAR, um, DAR 1909, 271.1. Have it taken us down through the secular events of the empire to the end of the 70 weeks, because verse 22 speaks about the death, the death of Christ. Um, the prophet in verse 23 takes us back, back to the time when the Romans became directly connected with the people of God by the Jewish League, B.C. 161. I don't know why he gives that date. But this is the date he gives. And the chart has one, one, 158. Um, but continuing on. It says, from which point we are, we are then um, taken down in a direct line of events to the final triumph of the church and the setting up of God's everlasting kingdom. The Jews, being grievously oppressed by the Syrian king, sent an embassy to Rome to solicit the aid of the Romans and to join themselves in the League of Amity, and confederacy with them, First Maccabees chapter eight and Perdo, um, book two, page two thirty four, and Josephus Antiquities book twelve chapter ten section six. The Romans listened, listened to the request of the Jews and granted them a decree couched in these words. It says, and um, yeah, all these things we had just now read. Anytime a war breaks out, shall. Um, you shall assist the Romans and not and not assist the ones who are fighting the Romans by corn or ships or money. And if they um, attack the Jews, the Romans shall come up and and help help the 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 Jews. And this is the whole um, covenant or contract, the league that the Jews make with the Romans, make with the dragon power. It's clearly shown us our day when the church shall league up with the state because, um, because harm is coming towards the church. This is exactly what happened with um, Jezebel as well. Elijah was speaking against her and, and, and um, the sins of Israel. And then she went, went, went to Ahab and said, you have to speak up against, against Elijah. Same thing with, with John, with Herod and Herodias. <coughs> so the same history is just you see the same thing, history in, in different ways. All right, turn on to 271.3. It says, at this time the Romans were a small people and 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 began. began to work deceitfully or with cunning, as the word signifies. And from this point they, they arose by steady and rapid ascent to the height of power which they afterward attained. All right. Now we go to Miller's Works, Volume 2, 83.3. Um, There's a lot in this um, paragraph. We're going to jump down to when, um, to the bold. It says, After the league made with him, that is, Romans, he shall work deceitfully and become strong with a small Republican people. This league was made, this league was made, made between the Romans and the Jews ratified and carried into effect with the Greeks under Bacchides. Bacchides. A, amen. Left, left besieging Jerusalem upon the command of the Romans, and as Josephus and Maccabees tell us, never returned to trouble them, the Jews, anymore. This league then, then took effect. This league then took effect um, when the third. K -K 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 when the third kingdom in Daniel's vision ceased harassing the Jews and the fourth kingdom began its rule over the Jews, the, the Jews and the world. This was in the year B.C. 158. Let those, let those um, who, amen, of the correctness of the foregoing statements read the, um, read, read the eighth and ninth chapters of, of the first Maccabees and, and Josephus, book 12, chapter 10, section 8 of his Ant Ant Antiquities. Antiquities. Thank you. Then, if this be correct, that, that, that pagan, Rome. pagan Rome began his power, 
Yeah, it began its power in the year BC 158, and was to continue 666 years. When would paganism? Yeah, when would paganism fall? Fall, fall in the Roman kingdom, and the daily sacrifice abomination be taken out of the way to make room for the abomination of the d desolation? I answer. Take 158 from 600, 666, and you will have 508. So, so this is exactly why um, when Rome comes in contact with, 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 with the Jews, um, it, with, with, with the Jews, it, it shows the establishment of this, this kingdom. It says, um, take 158 from 666, and you will have 508. Then, then in the year 8508, paganism ceased. So 666 years after 158, um, pagan rule um, falls. And now is when you see the rising of the papacy. All right. So now just looking at this covenant portion from the scriptures, go to Deuteronomy 7, um, 1 and 2. One second, just look at something very quickly. Actually, can someone read Deuteronomy 7, verse 1 and 2? When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land whither thou goest to possess it, and hath cast out many nations before thee, the Hittites, the Girgashites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hiv Hivites, Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than thou. And when the, the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee, Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor show show mercy unto them. Amen. So he says that we are not, the Lord tells us, we are not to make a league with any of the heathens. The Romans were clearly pagan as we were just reading. And now the Jews is making a league with the, with, with, <clears throat> with the heathen. And, and when you look at that word, it means league. So... This league of the Jews is going directly against that which the Lord has said through through Moses. We go to Isaiah fifty, Isaiah twenty-eight. Excuse me, verse fifteen. It says, "Because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, shall not come come unto us." And this is what the Jews try to do: save themselves from. From, from the scourges of the land. It says, For we have made lies our refuge, and on the falsehood have we hid ourselves. All right. And just showing that death and hell is, is connected with this Roman power, with, with, with the Pope. All right. So, bring this down to our time. We'll read these last two paragraphs. GC 560.3. Just the bold, and she just finished quoting Isaiah 28, verse 15. It says, in the class here Describe. described are, are, are in, Ludium. amen, those, those, those who in their, um, s s s amen, cover themselves with the assurance that there is to be no, um, Amen. For for the sinner, that that all that all mankind, um, it matters not how how um corrupt. corrupt are to be exalted to heaven, to to become as the angels of God, but 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 still more emphatically. Amen. Are those um. Making a um, a c with, death. with death, and an agreement with with, with hell, who who renounce who <coughs> renounce the truth. renounce the truths which heaven has um provided as a defense. Amen. For the righteous in the day of trouble and. And accept the um, refuge of lies offered by Satan. Amen. In its stead, the the, the pretensions. pretensions of spiritualism.
All right. So it's just speaking, of, speaking of a time in which we'll, we'll meet very soon where people will willingly choose, choose wrong in the face of right. And so I'll read this last paragraph showing this league, showing what, what this league or this, um, yeah, this compact is. What is a confederacy? The question has been asked. What do you mean by a confederacy? Who have formed confederacies? You know what a confederacy is, a union of men in a work that does not bear the stamp of pure, straightforward, unswerving integrity. Mm -hmm. The wicked are bound up in bundles, bound up in trust, in unions, in confederacies. Let us have nothing to do with these organizations. God is our ruler, our governor, and he calls us to come out <coughs> from the world and be separate. Come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. If we refuse to do this, if we continue to link up with the world and to look at every matter from a worldly standpoint, we shall become like the world. When worldly policy and worldly ideas govern our transactions, we cannot stand on the high and holy platform of eternal truth. Amen. And Rome works by, by this very same thing, by policy. the same... Dis Say it again. Policy. Policy. Amen. So if we as Seminary Adventists say, say that we are Seminary Adventists, we cannot work by the policy of Rome. And this is exactly what's happening now. Adventists are binding themselves up with, with a wrong work at this time, with this vaccine and all these things. All these things is, is the, is, are, um, come, come from the works of Rome, this, a Roman spirit. And so forth, but these things shall shall um, increase in the very very near future. So this is why we cannot view things in the worldly policy because um, as we view it in the worldly policy, we shall be like that worldly policy and push forth Roman doctrines um, as well. So pray that was plain seeing how um, seeing all these things l leading down into this 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 league um and and the quote or the, the quote she, she says if you become confused on the point of antichrist you shall wind up on the side of antichrist and this is what happened they said um they they applied it um applied the one who stood up Antiochus. against the prince of princes to wrong person and the jews here um lead up with, with Rome it's the same it's the same thing they both of them were um confused on the point of antichrist actually one the romans they 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 know know who it is but they purposely said it to somebody else so they can come off of them so um with that being said shall we close with a word word of prayer Also, Father in heaven, O Lord, we give thanks again for all that you have shown us. This may forgive us for our sins. Please help us, O Lord, to not view things as as Rome, O Lord, but to view things with with eyes 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 filled with the oil from on high, Lord. Please help us to fight back self and sin in this day. And please help us to walk in the light as well. And we ask all these things in your son's name we pray. Amen.